Okay. This is a play uh, as a result of our not um, presenting Cinderella to schools all over Montgomery County. We were all set this year to uh, take Cinderella, not take it, have schools come here to the Jewish Center so that they could see what we do. Unfortunately, the um, schools needed chaperones, they needed insurance, they needed buses, they needed parents, they needed this, they needed that, we figured, oh, the heck with it. Then they wanted us to go to the schools. Well, that's great, but who's going to take all of this stuff and their scenery behind that scenery and everything else? It's kind of an impossibility. So we didn't do that, so we decided to do another play. And the play that we're doing right at Passover time is a play that should take 32 weeks. But we did it in 10. We sure hope you like it. I know you will. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Once Upon a Time Theater. I am Mary, the Irish maid. Irish for the Schwartz, and it's sure a great, great life. <laughs>
together for Passover. There's always plenty of action around our house at this time of year. Ah, to think I was once a young boy, carefree and fun-loving. But now I'm a father and a husband. You think it's easy living in a house with five women? And the bills I get each month for the clothes. Unbelievable. But one thing really bugs me. My socks are always mixed up. Look. <laughs> I just moved 
moved in down the street. But she hasn't stayed in her house, but she's always over at ours. It always smells so good at your house. Got any cookies? Oh, sure do. Special ones for Passover. But don't come over today, Cindy. Grandma and Mrs. Schwartz are doing a lot of cooking. Wow! That's all the more reason to go. I'm going to the Schwartz's. Wait! Stop! We have enough people around the house. Faith Sammy Gora. Is that child always uncontrollable? Usually. But come on. Maybe we can stop from meeting up all the cookies. Your kids eat junk. 
Relax, Mom. I didn't have time to fix her lunch from this morning, so I gave her some money instead. She'll survive. Here, Jan. Sit down. Have some bread and butter. Oi, how thrilled a child in your cooking here. You're a scarecrow. Oi, help <laughs> Look, it's like she never had a decent meal in her entire life. You'll get run down and catch that terrible disease. You know the one, Rachel. You mean mononucleosis? That's the one. That's what she'll get. They'll have to put her in a hospital and feed her through tubes. She'll have to eat whether she wants it or not. All for crying out loud. Give me bread and butter already. Wonder what's keeping the twins. I finished cleaning the closets, Mrs. Schwartz. Do you want me to start removing the bread and flour before Passover? Hey, that's great, Mary. You've worked for us so long, you're starting to turn Jewish. At this point, it wouldn't take long to convert. Father Jones and our church is beginning to worry. We still have another day before we have to remove everything, Mary. Why not wait a little longer? Whatever you say, Mrs. Schwartz. Did you eat lunch, Mary? Yes, I did, ma'am. I brought my own lunch with me this morning. Irish stew. I made some for my husband yesterday, and he did some here today. Irish stew? Bet. How about a nice, helpful food? Just like Jewish Ryan butter. Didn't you notice some of your bread was missing? Had a few slices with the Irish stew. What a world we live in. Jewish rye and Irish stew. My family in Israel would never believe it. I'll work in the living room for now, Mrs. Schwartz, and then I'll set the table, if you want me to. That'll be just fine, Mary. Come in. Good morning, Mrs. Schwartz. Well, a good morning to you, too, Mrs. Snoop. Sunshine. I'm glad you stopped over. Mary told, me. Mary told me she ran into you this morning. Is it true you have no place to go for Passover? Well, is, is that what she said? Well, she didn't, didn't tell the truth. I have lots of places to go, but I don't know which one to choose. Then why did you stop over? Because because I just was wondering what was all the noise about over here. Well, my folks came in from Kansas City. My twin sister, sister Sarah is flying in. And Judy will be home from college soon. So there's plenty of tumult going on around here. Oh, so your whole family is spending Passover together. How nice. Well, try to keep the no noise down, will you? I must go now. Goodbye. Bye, Mrs. Sunshine. Thanks for dropping by. Hi, everyone. Mmm, something sure smells good. How about a taste? How about leaving? How about a cookie? A special, you know, for Passover. Thanks, Mrs. Schwartz. That's what I came over for anyhow. Do they taste as good as regular ones? You may even like them better. Uh-oh, I think you've got a problem, Rachel. What's wrong, Dad? I just looked out the living room window, and I don't think your next-door neighbor is very happy. Oh, that's Mr. Boatman. He's a bachelor. And he's a real drip. Always yelling about something. I hope the twins aren't in trouble again. Where have you guys been? I've been waiting forever. What's going on, girls? Hi, everybody. What do you mean? What's going on? With Mr. Feldman for change. Oh yeah, five bucket Feldman. He's a kook. And a drip. Anyhow, Jan, who are you talking to after school today? Yeah, we saw you, but you were so busy you didn't even notice us. So that's where you guys were spying on your sisters. Get that kid out of here. She's a pet. Don't try to change the subject, Jan. You were talking to Weldon Weinstein. Don't deny it. We saw you. Weldon Weinstein? What's the world coming through? Such names? What's wrong with biblical names like David, Joseph, or Moses? Weldon? Ay, ay, ay. Weldon and I were just talking about a campaign. That's all. What campaign, dear? John Glenn. Weldon is working for him, and I'm going to help. You're going to put an astronaut in office? Is going up a, in space and wait for a nice boy to earn a living? 
cooped up and cramped without fresh air or exercise or a hot meal? Cool it, Grandma. John Glenn's a great candidate. He might even win the election, too. As long as I live, I'll never understand. John Glenn goes up in the sky while his wife and children are left on the ground. I think I'm going to have a heart failure. Relax, Mom. It's a new world. But sometimes it's hard to leave the old one. Vegetable garden. Is that true? Ah, uh, he 
he's a grouch. We didn't do anything to a stupid garden. I believe you if you say so. It's true, Dad. We do take a shortcut to his yard, but we definitely don't step on his vegetables. All right, that's it. You have never lied to me before. I'll simply have a talk with Davis Bell. Just 
came in from Diet City. Hi, Dan. How are you? I, I still can't believe it. You two look exactly alike. I won't be able to tell you two apart. That should make life very interesting around here. I'll go tell you the others are here. Got any cookies? I'm not Mrs. Schwartz. I'm Sarah. Huh? You? You are her twin sister? But I thought, hey, aren't you the big fat that everyone's expecting? I am, or should I say was? I just came, I just came from Diet City. <laughs> I'm not 
Nobody's left me. Now what in the world is that noise? Hello. Oh, you must be that new girl who moved out down that neighborhood. Well, try to keep the noise down, will you? Are you the lady that lives? Are you the mean lady that lives? Uh oh. What did you say? Nothing. Oh yes, you did, Cindy. Are you invited for the seder? No. I'm gonna tell Mrs. Schwartz what you said. No, no, don't tell Mrs. Schwartz. I, I have lots of places to go, but I don't know which one to choose. Uh, hello, Mrs. Sunshine. I saw you outside and decided to come, come out and say hi. Any plans for Seder? Cindy told you what she said, didn't she? Yes. So why not tell the truth? Okay, I I am all in the, uh, alone, and I don't have any plans for Passover. Well, just say you'll come. Okay, I'll come. Bye, Mrs. Sunshine. Bye. Wow, I can't believe it. What can't you believe? My horoscope. It says Sam and Smells are high in my today's agenda. So what's that supposed to mean? Well, the Sam part means that Weldon is going to speak to me, and and the Smell part means he's going to take a whiff of my new cologne, a motion lotion. I doubt it. Well, that. I bet the sound part means that we're going to hear a lot of yelling around here today, and the smell, the smell part means that the mouth ball soup is cooking. Speaking of what's cooking, did both of you eat your oranges and your oatmeal today? Oatmeal? You have got to be kidding. That went out with high button shoes. I don't know what the younger generation is eating, but us, us college kids are eating Yule Gibbons fanatics. We like natural food. So what's a natural food? Granola. It's the greatest, and it's made from soybeans. Granola? Sounds like some terrible disease. And who's this Yule Gibbons? He doesn't sound Jewish. Yule Gibbons is a man of nature. He eats weeds, leaves, and other things like roots. Weeds and leaves? I'm choking just thinking about it. Grandma, since I'm only home for a couple days, would you mind sewing some real cool patches on my, on my pants? See what a grandma is for? Sewing so patches on jeans. I can't keep up with the younger generation. Not jeans, grandma, Levi. There's a big difference. You believe it? Once Levi was a great Judaic man, but now they're pants. And the more pants and dirtier, the, the better.
Marjorie? Did you leave, leave the door open? Instagram. 
grandma, or just a grandma. Kids are crazy in their way, but I love waking up to my children every day. I'm just a grandpa, I'm just a grandpa, getting used to kids' new way. I'm just a grandpa, I'm just a grandpa, boy to keep me in a day. Thank you guys. 